um, good morning, everybody. Uh, I am Rita Kotze, Senior Education Specialist for Physical Sciences at IMPACT. Um, and welcome at, at today's webinar on a Friday. <laughs> um, yes, so thank you very much for attending the webinar and I hope that you will learn something today. All right, I'm just going to give um, a minute, so one minute to, um, for everybody to log onto the system and to, um, so that we can start with the webinar. All right. Um, while you're writing, um, there are uh, notes. It's a question that that I wanted to download. It's one of it's the handout. It's the handout um, to, for today's session. So you can download it. So long, um, it's to the right or below on your screen, and to to download in the handout. All right, it's two minutes, so let us just start. Um, okay, again, I'm Marita Kotsi, Senior Education Specialist for Physical Sciences. Before we begin this webinar, let's come uh, cover some of the basics. All right, if you're struggling to hear me, it's your first time, make sure your audio is on and your speaker volume is turned up. You will automatically be muted when joining the session. I'm not going to answer any questions during the session. You can send all your questions through to um, academics at impact.co.za or to info at impact.co.za. Um, download this presentation as additional resources in the handout box below or on your right. You will also find all this information in the question box below or on your right. And remember to send us your questions. And if you want to, to look at the presentation again afterwards, um, you can go on Impact's YouTube channel. It's not available immediately, but it will be uh, available um, in, a, in a day or two. So yes, if you want to, um, to look at it again, feel free to, to do that. All right. I'm um, doing again chemical change today and I'm concentrating on chemical equilibrium. Chemical equilibrium is the um, one, I, I did cover it in a previous webinar, uh, but I did the basics for chemical equilibrium, but, but I'm going to concentrate more on the equilibrium constant today. All right, so what is equilibrium? Just a few things about that again. It's as we see here, reactions begins, um, and you can see here is a closed system, and the reaction starts to begin, and uh, no products form uh, get formed. All right, so you have A and B, like the blue and the, uh, the blue and green dots. You can see there A and B. Uh, no products, high rate of collisions between A and B, and so therefore the rate of the forward reaction is high. In this reaction that we do have here, we have the forward reaction uh, is favored here because it started to react to form your pro products. Okay, so collisions between reaction reactants start to decrease. Here's a high rate of collisions where it started to decrease. The rate of the forward reaction will also start to decrease and the rate of the reverse reaction begins. All right, at this stage here, the rate of the forward reaction equals the rate of the reverse reaction. So therefore, the moment that start to happen, we have dynamic equilibrium. I will discuss dynamic equilibrium um, later on. So what is happening here? The concentrations of both the reactants and the products are 
constant. All right, so phase equilibrium, as we see here, what is happening in A? The, wa the water has just been poured into the beaker and the system is not yet at equilibrium. You can see there's it, it starts to react. The water has just been put into the container and nothing has happened yet. The equilibrium at B equilibrium is reached at a low temperature. Wow. Now, what do you think? What's the difference between B and C? Think of B and C. C is where equilibrium is reached at a higher temperature. If we increase the temperature after equilibrium is reached, you will see that there will be, again, the forward reaction will be favored um, and um, um, increases. And at a certain stage, we will have, again, dynamic equilibrium. Right. The establishment of equilibrium, what is happening? Initially, the water evaporates and the number of molecules in the gas phase increases. All right? The number of molecules in the gas phase starting to increase here, and the molecules in the gas phase collide and starting to condense again. All right. So um, you have evaporation, but you have also condensation again. All right. So when the rate of evaporation equals the rate of condensation, a liquid vapor equilibrium exists. That is what we do have here in beaker B. A liquid vapor equilibrium exists. What do you think is the meaning of a liquid vapor equilibrium? So that just states that as the water evaporates, it condenses again to form a liquid. So it is in a equilibrium. All right, so the level of the water remains constant. Evaporation and condensation still both occur. That statement, evaporation and condensation still both occur, meaning the system is now here yeah, in bigger B in a dynamic equilibrium. So the water remains constant, but both the evaporation and condensation occur still, it is just in equilibrium. And so we increase the temperature that we saw here in beaker C, it will be in equilibrium until we increase the temperature in dynamic equilibrium. So yes, there are a few um, important terminology, uh, open system, a closed system, a reversible reaction and dynamic equilibrium. You know what is an open system? It's like a beaker with a glass of water. When you want to drink a glass of water, water there's nothing, there's not a lid on the glass, it's just an open system. So um, the water can start evaporating and there's nothing that will change it. The moment we put a lid on the, on the glass, we have a closed system so that uh, evaporation and condensation can start taking place. So what is happening in a closed system? It's a system in which energy can enter or leave freely, but no reactants or products can leave or enter the system. All right, so what is a reversible reaction? It is um, reactants form products and products form reactants. And we see a reversible reaction by the indication of the, or the representation of a double arrow, as you can see here. You need to have a double arrow. So what is dynamic equilibrium? As I said previously, both the reverse and the forward reaction taking place at the same rate. So the concentrations of the reactants and the products are now constant. All right. So 
chemical equilibrium and equilibrium constant. The fact that we can are going to cover here today is um, reversible and irreversible reactions, the dynamic state of chemical equilibrium, equilibrium constant expression, the writing of the expression of the constant equilibrium constant Kc, calculations with the equilibrium constant Kc, and calculating Kc with the equilibrium constant table, the rice table. All right. So what is the difference between a reversible and an irreversible reaction? Okay, your reversible reaction can proceed in both directions, right? So here we can see both directions. So, and we normally see it as reactants or products and products uh, um, for the reversible react, uh, reaction the products are then the reactants to form the products that you have here. All right, as you can see here in this, this example that I do have here, um, calcium carbonate, um, we increase that or it's heated. The calcium carbonate is heated and it decomposes into calcium oxide and calcium and uh, carbon dioxide. All right. So we have calcium carbonate and carbon dioxide are the two products that we that formed here. All right, so the calcium carbonate decomposes. All right, so now what is happening is as it started to, in this we do have an open system, All right? So if it's an open system, it will just go in one direction. But if it is heated in a closed system, as we have here, we can see, all right, then both these reactions can take place. So what will then take place? There will also be a reverse reaction with calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. When the temperature, when we lower the temperature, it reforms again into calcium carbonate. So you do have a decomposition of high at high temperature and the reforming at low temperature. So what is an irreversible reaction? An irreversible reaction can proceed only in, in one direction. Products of the formant reactants are reactants from the reverse reactants. So you there's no, it's, it's not a forward and, and reverse reaction. For example, as we have here, you're burning wood and it turns into ashes. Okay, there's no backward. You cannot uh, put, you cannot change the ashes again into, into wood. So that is an irreversible reaction. All right. All right, so what I do here, I, I include um, a graph with you to see what is happening with the concentration over time. This is a type of graph that you will get in an exam paper or test paper, and you need to explain what is happening here. Here we have the colorless uh, dinitrogen tetroxide. This is Dinitrogen tetroxide, that is the one that we do have here. N2O4 is dinitrogen tetroxide. All right, so this is a reversible reaction. As you can see, it's a closed system. Sorry, let me just put down my. All right, so the initial concentration, as we can see here, we have the initial concentration of N2O4. N2O4 
turns into NO2, that is nitrogen dioxide. Right. This is dinitrogen tetroxide. So the dinitrogen tetroxide is the colorless one. The moment when we start to increase the temperature of the dinitrogen tetroxide, nitrogen dioxide started starting to form. Right, as you can see here. The initial concentration, therefore, of the nitrogen dioxide is zero, and it's 0 0.07 the, the dinitrogen tetroxide. Okay. So now, at equilibrium, where is equilibrium? Equilibrium is there where you see the dotted line. At equilibrium, what is happening? What is happening with the concentration of the dinitrogen tetroxide and what is happening with the concentration of the um, nitrogen dioxide? Okay, the nitrogen dioxide is now at equilibrium at 0 0.08 and the dinitrogen tetroxide it's is 0 0.04 mole. All right, so the equilibrium was reached after eight seconds. All right, so the blood shape of the curve after equilibrium was reached indicates that both forward, both the forward and the reverse reactions have the same rate at that stage there. So here we have a dynamic for these this part here from from eight um, from the time eight on to um, in any case in here we have 14 15 um, seconds um, it is in a dynamic equilibrium state. So during the course of the reaction, the intensity of the brown color increases, as you can see. So what would happen for the reverse reaction? For the reverse reaction, it will decrease again to colorless. Right. So now where's equilibrium do you think? Remember, dinitrogen tetroxide is colorless. Nitrogen dioxide is brown. So there's nitrogen dioxide. There's nitrogen tetroxide, dinitrogen tetroxide. So here in the middle, where we have both colorless and dark brown, uh, where we have both of the reactants and the product in the system, we will have equilibrium. Okay. So colorless brown. Decomposition reaction, so your forward reaction will be into O4 um, that forms nitrogen dioxide. Your formation reaction will be the reverse reaction where a nitrogen dioxide turn again into dinitrogen tetroxide. All right. The equilibrium between a nitrogen dioxide and dinitrogen tetroxide, what is happening here? Um, I, once at equilibrium, here we start at temperature zero. There's only dinitrogen tetroxide molecules in the system. Okay. At pre equilibrium, we have pre equilibrium. That is where it started to happen. All right. You can see you have one, two, three, four, five dinitrogen tetroxides, and you have one, two, three nitrogen dioxides. Okay, so it's not in equilibrium. So what will happen there at equilibrium? As we can, as we go back, there is where it started to form this equilibrium. All right. So now again, so in, at equilibrium, we have for each N2O4, for each dinitrogen tetroxide molecule, we have two nitrogen dioxide molecules. One, two, three, four, five, six, six. Right. So 
Here you can see how many um, dinit uh, nitrogen dioxide we have for each um, nitrogen tetroxide, dinitrogen tetroxide. All right, so here again, we have two types of graph. I include now the rate time graph as well for you, so that you can see that there's a difference between the concentration time graph and the rate time graph. Okay, and you can see that the curve for the nitrogen dioxide is a bigger curve than the dinitrogen tetroxide, and the reason for that is because the concentration of the nitrogen dioxide are two times the concentration of are two times the concentration of the dinitrogen tetroxide. So equilibrium again are achieved here and at, in this space from there onwards the rates are equal. So the equilibrium therefore occurs when the rate of the forward reaction equals the rate of the reverse reaction until something changes. All right. So now what, what are the facts that we have to know about equilibrium? Um, I include a few questions here, and there are more questions on the science Phoenix note, more about that afterwards, and in the quantum books, more about that afterwards. All right. In this reaction that we discussed up until now, water concentrations of gases changes at equilibrium. No, not at all. The concentrations stay the same. Both the reactants and products no longer changes with time, so the concentration um, at equilibrium, the concentrations of the mixture of the reactants and the products no longer changes. Why? It's because the reaction is in a closed system where no gases can escape. That's why. So how can you tell if the reaction is at equilibrium if the colors stop? changing if there's no color change anymore. So yes, does the reaction stop the moment equilibrium is reached? No, the reaction doesn't stop. Why? Because it's in dynamic equilibrium. Why? The composition of the equilibrium mixture remains constant with time, but the reaction is still going on in, in, a, in an equilibrium. The equilibrium is dynamic. And what is the meaning of that? Some dinitrogen tetroxide is always converting to nitrogen dioxide, and some nitrogen dioxide is always converting into dinitrogen tetroxide. At equilibrium, the two processes occur at the same rate, as we saw on the, these two graphs. At equilibrium, it is at the same rate. The concentrations are also the, stay the same. All right, so now what is dynamic state of chemical equilibrium? I include again, we're still busy with this um, reaction. And this reaction, by the way, it's it's a reaction that um, it's the, it's it's normally in, in some of the question papers, most of the question papers that are still in of the question papers that are still. So yes, here you can see a closed system. So that's why we can say regarding this, there will be equilibrium at a certain stage. That's why we have the double arrow. Okay. So the stage reached when the concentrations of the reactants and the products remain constant over time. As you can see here, here's the dinitrogen tetroxide and the two nitrogen dioxides um, at this the dynamic equilibrium therefore needs a reversible reaction and a closed system. A reversible reaction and a closed system. All right, now the equilibrium constant expression. All right, I know that you are familiar with this, with this expression, but I know also that this is for some learners very difficult to understand, but it's if you do understand the concept, it is not so difficult to understand and do the calculations. Please, please, please 
um, uh, start to, to practicing to write the, um, the concept, the, to write these um, expressions and to do the calculations. The moment when you start doing it, you see you can do it, it's, it, it becomes easier and easier and easier. All right. So here I have um, a, an equation um, and the small a, b, c, d in front of the capital letter a, b, c, d letters, they are an indication of the mole ratio. Okay, so if it's if there's if it's one, if if the number one is in front of it, it's not not it's not easy to write it, and it, we also will not use it in the um, equilibrium constant expression if it's the number is one. All right, so what do we have here? The KC expression equals the products, the concentration of the products over the concentration, the, the multiplication of the concentration of the reactants, okay? It's always the multiplication of the concentration of the products over the multiplication of the concentration of the reactants. The index C in the KC term indicates that the equilibrium constant is expressed in terms of the molar concentration of the reagents. That's why the block, the blocks around the symbol um, is, the, is the symbol for concentration. And this means um, the concentration of C multiplied with the concentration of D. All right. So this is the equilibrium concentration of reactant A, equilibrium concentration of reactant B, equilibrium concentration of product C, and equilibrium concentration of product D. Now, so let us start and do... Um, and write a um, KC expression for a certain reaction, right, chemical reaction. So here again, we have the same formula that we have on the previous um, page. I include it here again so that you can write it in here just for discussion matters. All right. So, very important that no liquids or solids are used in the uh, equilibrium constant expression. We use only gases and, and um, aqueous ions in the KC expression, the concentration of gases and aqueous um, ions. Right, so for solution. So it's very important for you to, to remember that, that we does not include that in our um, expression. Right, so the um, concentration of the product is mole per cube decimeters and concentration of the reactants is mole per cube decimeters. So therefore, um, the answer of KC um, don't have the unit because it's concentrations divided by concentrations so there's no concentration. There's no unit for the equilibrium constant expression. So what we have here is we have a chemical reactant, uh, A, B, C, and D are the molar concentrations of each substance present at equilibrium. So here are the chemical um, equations at equilibrium, where nitrogen oxide and hydrogen gas or nitrogen gas and water. So the reactants are NO and H2 and the products are in H2 H2O. So here are your reactants and there are your products. It is important to look at the coefficients of the equations as well. The coefficients are the two in front of the nitrogen oxide, the two in front of the hydrogen gas, one in front of the nitrogen gas and two in front of the hydrogen of the water gas. All of them are in gas phase, so all of them will be included in our equation. 
the alkalicity will be products over reactants. So it is the product to the power of the number in front of it. The concentration of, of nitrogen um, gas to the power of one is the number in front of it. As I said, it's only for discussion purposes that I include this here. So it's not necessary. We don't put the one here and there. All right. Water to the power of two is the other product. Now we look at our reactants. Nitrogen, no, nitrogen oxide to the power of two. Why? There's the two. And hydrogen gas. To the power of two, there's hydrogen gas. All right. So, what are the steps that you're going to follow when writing expressions for equilibrium constant KC? The first step, what you're going to use here, we have an expression for equilibrium constant that we're going to use. This is just an expression that I'm going to use to explain this concept to you. So, the first step that you do when you get to a question. You write your KC constant expression. All right. So then you determine the reactants and the products of the reaction. Okay. So these are the reactants, and on the other side of the equation are your products. So X and Y are both reactants, and therefore X free Y are the products. It is, is the products. It is a gas and will include. So all three of them are gases, so all three will be included in our expression. So write the general expression for KC for this reaction. So x to the power of x, what, what is in front of x, um, y, 3 to the power of y, what is in front of the y, and x, 3, y to the power of that is z just to indicate the power of the what what the power will be. So what will you do then? The step four is what are the coefficients in the balance equation? We have nine, we have y three is one and x three y is three. That are the coefficients of in this calculator balance equation. So therefore, your KC calculation expression will be um, products, the concentration of the product to the power of the coefficient over the, uh, uh, the multiplication of the concentration of the two reactants to the power of the coefficients. X is to the power of nine, and y is to the power of one. Again, I include the one just for explanation purposes. All right, so calculating the equilibrium constant Kc. This is an easy question. Um, all the concentrations are given. You don't need to calculate any concentrations. You do have all of them. So uh, you start it again with your balanced chemical equation. And you write down what do you have? The concentrations of the compounds used are that is what we do have. The sulfur dioxide is 0 0.2 mole per cube decimeter. Nitrogen concentration of nitrogen dioxide is 0 0.1 mole per cube decimeter. Concentration of uh, nitrogen oxide is 0 0.4 and um, sulfur trioxide is 0 0.2. So the first step again, write general expression, determine the reactants and products. Step three, write the expression for KC. And again, I put it in here just for um, explanation and purposes. So yes, this will be your KC expression for this reaction. The concentrations, the multiplication of the concentrations of the products over the multiplication of the concentrations of the reactants. Put in the values and calculate 0 0,4 multiplied by 0 0,2 
the body plus are 0, 0,8 and 0, 0,2, the body multiply by 0, 0,1. And the moment when you calculate this, you get to the answer, and that's 4, therefore, no unit. So the next way, if that is an easy question, all right, but not all of the chemistry questions are easy. So what will you do if it's a more complicated question? All right. Now that is where the, the um, paper that I gave to you today as a handout um, with where that one comes from. Um, I the, that is an example of the equilibrium calculation that is more complicated. All right. So um, you can after this session, I want you to do the question and follow the steps closely and clearly follow it and then try to do the try to do the question on your own and then you can mark it and after you mark it see if you do have any problems with it make sure that you do understand it and then start doing a few um, questions in the front of the group just to make sure that you do understand the concept okay we, the name for this is the rice table for the more complicated calculations. R is reaction, the balanced chemical equation that we see where we do have it. That's the balanced chemical equation. All right, that's your reaction. I is the initial quantity that you do have. Now, the, that are the moles of the reactants and product at the beginning of the reaction. As we say, it is a um, what they um, can give you um, not all of the, the concentrations, and then you need to calculate them first before you do the calculation. Right. So you have the initial quantity, then you have a change for um, for the, the reactants and the products. How much the moles of the reactants and products change between the beginning of the reaction and to equilibrium. And then we have the equilibrium phase. At what has happened at equilibrium, the moles of the reactants and the products at equilibrium are the first E and the second E of the equilibrium concentration. To calculate the KC, you need the concentration of the reactants and the products at equilibrium. So therefore, you have to calculate it with your formula C equals M divided by B, or M equals C multiplied by B. And remember, if no volume is given, assume that the volume is one cubed. All right, so here I have um, an easy question for you calculating the KC with the equilibrium constant table. Sorry, we start with a formula of dinitrogen, of nitrogen dioxide, and nitrogen dioxide. Three moles of nitrogen dioxide are placed in a 1,5 cube decimeter container, and the following equilibrium is established. So now we have three nitrogen dioxide and not two. And we have a 1.5 cube decimeter container. And what now? At equilibrium, it was found that 0.3 more of the nitrogen dioxide was present in the container. Remember, as I said, at dynam dynamic equilibrium, the reaction will still go on. The, for the forward and reverse reactions will still go on. But both nitrogen dioxide and nitrogen tetroxide, dinitrogen tetroxide, both of them will still be in the container. So now at equilibrium, we find that 0.3 more of the nitrogen tetroxide, nitrogen dioxide was present in the container. Calculate the value of the equilibrium constant for the reaction. The first step was or that you need to do the ratio. Write this, number one, write this, chemical equation. So therefore, it's NO2 and N2O4. The reactants and the 
product. Now the calculation or the um, notes that I gave you does have more reactants and, and then this one reactant and two products. So it can be more, so if it's more, you can just draw more products. All right, it depends on re how many reactants and products are there. So the ratio is two to one according to our balanced equation. That's your ratio, All right? So now what happens at the beginning? At the beginning, we have three moles of nitrogen dioxide and zero dinitrogen tetroxide. Okay, that is in the beginning of all your reactants. In uh, or if it if it's that otherwise, you it is zero. Your products are zero at the beginning in the initial phase. Okay? Um, it depends on what they what the information are that they giving you there. All right. So what are the change then? All right. So we say at equilibrium. You don't put in that first. First, put in your what is happening here at equilibrium. We have 0 0,3 mole of nitrogen dioxide in the container. So, how much of the nitrogen dioxide is being used to form dinitrogen tetroxide? It is 3 minus the 0 0,3. So your change is minus two comma seven. So you have to minus that from the three in order to get to the zero comma three at equilibrium. So what is the ratio? How what will be the number of moles of nitrogen dinitrogen tetroxide? Regarding the fact that the ratio is two to one, you will divide the change. Because with two, because the ratio is two to one, so it's two comma seven. So if the gain of dinitrogen dioxide is plus one comma three five. Okay. So at equilibrium, we will know that we have zero to the three mole of nitrogen dioxide and one comma three five. Try that. Dinitrogen tetroxide. Okay, so now what concentrations do we have? We didn't have, we, there's no concentration. We don't have any concentrations, but we do have 1,5 pure decimeters, that's your body. So now that is a, cal a calculation reaction that you need to do here um, with your formula concentration equals mole divided by volume so the number of moles at equilibrium is 0 0.3 divided by your volume is 1.5 your answer is 0 0.2 1.35 divided by 1.5 your answer is 0 0.9 so therefore in your kc first step write the kc expression products over Reactants. So reactants, the, uh, the product is one, so it's only the concentration to the power of one, and the concentration of nitrogen dioxide is to the power of two because of the coefficient in front of it. So it will be 0 0,9 divided by 0 0,2 to the power of two. Your answer will be 22,5. Can you see it's much easier to do this um, calculation by using a table? Now, the next thing and the last thing I just want to discuss to you because this is part of equilibrium is the Chatelier's principle. I just, I did cover it in, in the previous um, slide as well, but I put it in here for the learners that um, didn't attend the previous webinar. So what does the Chatelier is principle side. If a system in chemical equilibrium is subject to, to a change. All right. So up until now, we saw graphs with dynamic equilibrium and nothing else. Okay. But what will happen if we change the temperature? 
as I explained in the beginning, having the white nitrogen dioxide and uh, the white dinitrogen tetroxide, colorless to colorless, dinitrogen tetroxide, and then um, we have the brown, the dark brown nitrogen dioxide from where we sucked. <clears throat> it can change us. Okay, so what will happen if we change the temperature? The moment we start to, to increase the temperature for the dinitrogen tetroxide, you will see nitrogen dioxide starts to form. Okay, so if we change the temperature, the pressure, or the concentration, the processes occur within the system which tends to counteract the change in both. So at equilibrium, we have both the reactions and the products. The forward and reverse reactions was at equilibrium. Then we change this. For example, temperature or pressure or concentration, the moment changes it, there will be a stress applied. So what will happen? According to Le Chatelier, the stress that, that are applied, the system will react in such a way to self-adjust the problem to have a re-establishment of your equilibrium again. Okay, so that is what the equilibrium is. So the factors which affect equilibrium, there are three factors that affect equilibrium concentration, pressure, and temperature. Please um, download the science clinic notes for graphical interpretation to see the graph, graphical interpretations, and to explain the differences for each and every one. What will happen if concentration is increases or decreases? Equilibrium will shift to decrease any increase in, in, in concentration. Either of the reactants, if I increase, say for example, the reactant, then the, the forward reaction will be favored because you, the more products will form in order to establish the equilibrium again. So we'll shift to increase any decrease in concentration. So pressure, we only use pressure with gases. A change in pressure can be brought about by changing the volume of the container. So um, we can either change the volume of the container, adding or removing one of the reacting gases, change the partial pressure, adding or removing non-reacting gas has no effect on the equilibrium. Very important for that. So for example, if if it is a gas, you, you add a gas. That will not form part of the reaction, nothing will happen. Right, so the effect of concentration, what is happening with concentration? Increasing the concentration of the reactant, if we increase the concentration of the reactants, this decreasing the concentration of the product, we favor the forward, so the um, forward reaction, so we increase the concentration, the forward reaction will be in favor. Also, the equilibrium to shift to the right, decreasing the concentration of the reactant, increasing the concentration of the product. This will find the reverse reaction. So, if you decrease this, the concentration of the of the um, it decreases the concentration of the product will be more or higher than the concentration of the reactants. So, more um, products will decompose to form reactions again and again. Okay, so the, um, for the reverse reaction. We call addition or removal of solids or liquids does not change the concentration, only gases and aqueous solutions. What will be the effect of pressure? At higher pressure, particles are closer together. So here, to counteract this, the equilibrium shifts in the direction of fewer molecules. Okay, here we have one mole plus three moles. We have four moles, four, four molecules, or four moles on the left hand side, two moles on the right hand side. So, by increasing the, the, 
the pressure in the system, the counteractive vehicles shift in the direction of fewer molecules. So therefore, to the right, there are two molecules. Um, and if we compare it in comparison with four molecules on the left hand. All right. So effect of temperature. We already saw what happens with the effect of temperature. Um, if we have um, uh, um, dinitrogen tetroxide and we start to, to heat it, it changes into nitrogen dioxide and at equilibrium we have for each uh, dinitrogen tetroxide two nitrogen dioxides. All right. Effect of temperature. So again, the flask on the left is in a dish of hot water, and the flask on the right is in ice. Can you see the moment we put it down, it turns lighter because more dinitrogen tetroxide start to form, and if we put it in heat, more nitrogen dioxide form. So it depends if you increase the temperature, causes more nitrogen dioxide to form and decreasing the temperature will cause it more nitrogen dinitrogen detoxide. Right. Also see science clinic notes for more examples and calculations for this. All right. So what is happening here? The Shatter's principle summary. So if we increase the concentration, it shifts to the opposite opposite side. It doesn't increase the concentration of the product. So for example, Increased concentration of the uh, um, reactants equals shift to the product. Um, if you increase the products, it will shift to the reactants. Okay. Decreased concentration, it will shift to the same side. Okay, it will, don't have, it will not have any change in the KC expression for the nation around. Increased pressure, shift to the side with the least moles of gas. Decrease, shift to the side with the most moles of gas. If you increase the pressure and the number of moles on the left and the right are the same, then it will have no, it will have no effect. Okay, so, so for example, if there's two moles on the left hand side and there's two moles on the right hand side, there will be no change. Right. What will happen if we increase the temperature? It shifts in the endothermic direction, endothermic reaction direction, because an endothermic reaction uh, are favored with the increase in temperature, and then there will be a change in KC. If we decrease the temperature, it shifts in the exothermic exo direction, and it will change the KC. A catalyst will have no effect on equilibrium because both the forward and the reverse reaction are favored at the same time. So it will also have an effect on All right. And now we get at the part where I discuss the additional resources for physical sciences. Dr. Insha, Quanta Boots and Science Clinic, if you're not part of impact, um, uh, we use the study guides, Dr. Angel study guide. It does have very nice summaries and mind maps in it. And um, you can also have question papers that I um, I gave to, to the last few webinars as handouts. And um, you can buy exercise books from Dr. Angel. Um, and you can also order it from them. Um, Fast papers, you can, you can download papers from the DBE from the website, but you can also download it from, from Dr. Sanisha's website. It's easier to download from, from their website. So Dr. Sanisha papers, it's ordered from the Dr. Sanisha website. So you can order it from them, previous papers, as much as you want. So the quantum groups are um, the impact learners received quantum boots with their packages this year. 
at the Quantia Books desk of two DVDs at the back of the Quantia Books. Please look at it if you do have a struggle with any concept of physics or chemistry. Look at the lessons on the DVDs. It's, it's um, uh, an excellent science teacher explain the concepts on the DVDs. And um, there are exam type of questions, multiple choice questions, as well as longer questions in the quantum books. All right, here is an example of a more complicated question uh, that you can find um, in the quantum textbook of the quantum book um, and the memorandum at the back of the, of the quantum book. Make sure that you do understand questions as well as the, what you need to answer. Here you can see, see, give an explanation for the change which occurred at T20, at, um, at T20 down 20, where you have to discuss your um, change. Here you have to discuss um, what is happening here. All right, so um, look at the, the memorandums and answer. Uh, if you don't get to the answer, that's and the answer is not correct. The multiple choice questions are um, well explained why is it A and not B or B or not C or D, whatever. Right, and then if you didn't um, download the science clinic notes yet, please download the science clinic notes. You can see here it's, it's a comprehensive, it's very good, the summary with explanations as well as calculations to it, as well as graphs that you need to use um, and interpret in grade 12 as well. So go onto the website, download, here is the link, download the books, you can also register for the exam seminars. It is um, exam preparation seminars, it's very, very good do exam type of questions in the exam seminars so please um, if you do need some extra help uh, go and register on the website unfortunately you need to pay for that but if you you have to state that you are a, an impact register client and in which region you are so that um, if there are any discounts that you can get the discounts all right, so go and um, sign up for the webinar. It's very, very good. Do exam type of questions and test type of questions. And uh, the, the sessions are done also by qualified um, physical sciences teachers. If you do have any questions, you can send it to, to, to um, info at info.co.za. And if you want to register, you can also send it at info at info for service today. And you can send me a question to academics at info for service today. You can ask any question. Thank you very much for attending today's webinar. See you next time. Have a nice weekend.